In this video, I'm going to talk about a major shift in blockchain technology that's going to completely change how we interact with the world around us. It's going to enable a brand new internet that's going to completely change how we interact with one another. You know, it's captured the attention from some of the largest companies on the face of the earth because they think this is one of the next big trends that's going to take off. So in this video, I'm going to talk about that as a blockchain developer who works with this technology on a daily basis. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So I just got done reading this article about Mark Zuckerberg on the future of Facebook and where he sees, you know, this company taking a big bet on this trend that I'm talking about in this video. So I'm going to go through some points in here, but what he says is effectively Facebook, they're changing their mission about how they view their company. They're transitioning from people seeing us as primarily being a social media company to being a metaverse company. So what is that? Well, this is the metaverse. This is one of the next big trends that people are talking about that has a, has a massive intersection with blockchain technology that's going to completely change how you know we interact with the world around us and other people online. So how would you define the metaverse? So it was originally coined in a Neil Stephenson sci-fi novel in 1992, but the term refers to a convergence of physical, augmented, and virtual reality in a shared online space. I've made some previous videos on this channel talking about how I think this is one of the big trends to take off with blockchain, but I want to make this dedicated video to deep dive into it and actually explain what it is and, and you can see why it's such a big deal. So basically, you can think of the metaverse as sort of the next natural evolution of the internet, where we take the internet from being sort of this 2D experience that we see now to a 3D experience, which will be embodied by the metaverse. So we've already seen many apps and experiences start to embody elements of the, the metaverse. You can think about this time anytime you participate in a reality that sort of takes you out of your current moment. Maybe you're engrossed in a video game. Anytime you, you know, interact with an anonymous account on social media, these are all kind of like bits of what will be a part of the metaverse. We've seen elements in the past with things like, you know, Tamagotchis and Gigapets, you know, Fortnite, Roblox, Animal Crossing. These are all examples of where you can act, interact with digital things and own digital things that are outside of your current reality that have a value. And so the metaverse takes this idea of ownership and interaction and takes it to the next level by creating more of a 3D internet that you can interact with. This is what's called the embodied internet. So let's just give an example to explain this and how it differs from the 2D version of the internet that you might use today. So let's say you're watching this video on a website like youtube.com. You're just going to this website. You're watching a person talk in two dimensions on a, on a screen. Or maybe you scroll on Twitter and you read, you know, social media content that way. It's just text on a screen. Maybe you watch some videos. Maybe you look at some pictures. Or maybe if you want to interact with somebody remotely, you actually want to meet them. You send them a Zoom link and say, hey, let's, you know, get on a Zoom call. Let's just talk face to face. But the metaverse way of thinking about this is, hey, maybe whenever you watch a video, like you're actually going into a virtual reality where you're seeing this person on a stage. Age and you can like see a 3D representation of them. Maybe you can actually walk up to them and meet them afterward, like a live stream setting. Instead of just watching them on a video and chatting, maybe you can talk to them after. And whenever you're interacting with that person, you might see a 3D representation of that person in real time, or maybe that person gets to choose how they look. Maybe they get to have some idealized version of themselves in three dimensions that represents themselves in the metaverse. So these are some examples of the metaverse, you know, this new embodied internet and how it's different from, you know, the internet that we might use today. So one thing I really want to talk about is how this new transition is being enabled by blockchain technology, because, of course, we've seen, you know, augmented reality and virtual reality, you know, happen in the past with varying degrees of success. We've seen things like, you know, Pokemon Go, you know, Oculus Rift, all these things over time that have kind of had varying degrees of success. But one big missing piece of this is actually blockchain technology. So why is that? Well, when you converge the metaverse with blockchain, we're talking about a new world where you can actually represent value inside the metaverse, where you can actually represent ownership in a trustless, decentralized way, where you don't have to rely on any central authority to govern this ownership. Because inside the metaverse, essentially what's going to happen is you have all these different places that are built by different entities, and you can seamlessly transition in and out of those places. But the ownership inside the metaverse will be actually, you know, represented on top of blockchain technology. And so you can see this summarized in an influential essay from January 2020 by uh, venture capitalist Matthew Ball, where he says the metaverse basically has to span the physical and virtual worlds containing fully fledged economy and offer unprecedented interoperability. Users have to be 
be able to take their avatars and goods from one place into the metaverse to another, no matter who runs a particular part of it. Critically, no one company will run the metaverse. It will be an embodied internet operated by many different players in a decentralized way. So that's key. The metaverse is going to have an entire economy in and of itself, and you need blockchain technology in order to enable that part of its existence. All right, so let's talk about some reasons like why we even want this in the first place. So why, why do we want the metaverse to exist? Well, it's lots of reasons, but I'll break down some of them right now. So the first thing is, it just seems like the next natural wave of the internet, the next direction that this is headed. You know, people like new technology, they like sort of the next big thing. But I think there's actually some real human desires that are at play that can cause the metaverse to actually be sticky and take off. So the first is to actually create a world as you want it to be, to actually cater your own preferences, okay? We already see the desire for this online. It's already happening basically with the internet right now where people kind of tend to just gravitate towards ideas that they like and disassociate from ideas they don't like. People basically create images themselves as they want to be seen online rather than how they actually are. So some examples of this might be, let's say that you have a photo of yourself online. Like how many times have you seen this where somebody else has a picture of them on their social media account that, you know, it is a picture of them, but if you saw them in real life, like it doesn't really look like them because the image that they've chosen is like the most flattering possible image that they could take. And it's maybe not quite a true representation of themselves. That's because they're projecting themselves as they desire to be rather than how they actually are. Or maybe people choose like a cartoon version of themselves that's stylized, that's different from how they actually are. Or maybe they choose like an NFT avatar project that they think is a better representation than their actual physical appearance. The whole point is here is that you're able to create something that you know, embodies your desired state rather than the reality that exists around you. So the same type of thing with the metaverse, where you could basically create a world that you like being in sort of better than the one that you like now. You can make it look how you want to. You can look how you want to. You can, you know, be around only the people you want to be around. That's basically kind of what's happening on the internet right now. That's why people spend so much time on it. And this is really the next logical step for all of that. And while some of these things can be good and definitely some of these things can be bad, Let's talk about the good things like the new possibilities of the metaverse opens up. So one of them is the possibility for new communities to actually participate in a new global economy. So here he says that the metaverse will bring enormous opportunity to individual creators and artists, to individuals who want to work and own homes far from today's urban centers. So basically, if you don't want to live in the city, you can live somewhere else. And then people who live in these places where opportunities for education and recreation are more limited, then they can basically just participate in the metaverse. So he says a realized metaverse could be the next best thing to a working teleportation device. So basically he's saying with the company's Oculus division, which produces the Quest headset, you know, Facebook is trying to develop one. And so this basically is taking the idea of remote work to the next level. And one reason I think that we're kind of at a unique time in history for the metaverse to actually take hold is because one, you can see sort of the need for it. Number two, um, you know, we're at this point where blockchain could provide this critical infrastructure for the metaverse to flourish. Number three is I think we're already starting to see people pushed uh, into the direction where they're familiar with these ideas at a mass scale. So number one, basically blockchain has bubbled up into the public conversation way more over the past year. Um, ever since, you know, the lockdowns happened in 2020 and in 2021, uh, people have basically been forced into remote work in many cases and see that they actually a viable way of, you know, living, you know, working from home, living in a different place from where you work. We've been sort of forced into these lifestyle changes that show you a different viable way to do things. But the last one is actually from live events. So remember earlier I was talking about the metaverse could change how you how you do live events. So, you know, during lockdowns, when basically live events were non-existent, people had to change how they did this. So live performers, musicians, all this type of stuff started doing live streams. And of course, that had been going on for a while, but it really took off in a way that had never had before because consumers were sort of forced to stay at home and they were experiencing things in a different format than they had before. And the metaverse changes how this could happen, okay? So the future of live events begins with the metaverse. So you could be in a situation where, you know, this is a new format for how people, you know, interact with their favorite creators, experience live music entertainment. And maybe we have a world where this is in a hybrid fashion, where, you know, you could choose to attend the actual event. You could choose the metaverse version and attend virtually and not actually go to the live thing. Or you could go to the live event and actually experience an augmented reality where you're there in person, but there's still elements of the metaverse to do this. 
And so that's another big factor of the metaverse is not necessarily just this alternate world out here in the physical world, but it's actually the merging of the two together. That's what augmented reality is. You can take elements out of the metaverse and, uh, you know, use them in the real world. So y- y- we see this, some of this with uh, a startup who's focusing on, you know, horse racing in the metaverse. This is basically we have a virtual world and you can actually own these horses and you can race them and it's sort of bring in the whole sports betting um, format to, you know, horse racing. But you can actually see, like, in their uh, Instagram how they sort of implement augmented reality to this. Like, you could actually go see, you know, your uh, virtual horse in an actual horse stable. Maybe you could watch the event uh, on a live racetrack or something where you're watching your virtual horse, you know, race. There's all these different ways where you can take things out of the metaverse world into the physical world with this augmented reality. And maybe that happens with the live events as well. So this is all brand new stuff with, you know, endless possibilities. We're seeing lots of capital you know, infused in the space, betting on these companies to see what they can come up with. But this is definitely a massive trend that you have to watch out for and is only really made possible right now with blockchain technology. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited about it. And we continue to cover it on this channel. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. You know, if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you go to my YouTube homepage, you find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.